From the second largest city in the U.S., Los Angeles, California, we've got football as EA Sports coverage of the NFL is on the air. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Chicago Bears and the Los Angeles Rams. We play to win. First carry here for Todd Gurley. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. Last week, of course, the great performance, over 200 yards. He still wants to be fed. And they should. That's exactly what you should do. I have not yet met a running back that's run for over 200 yards that says the very next week, hey, let's back things up. Yeah, I don't need it as much. No, they want it more and more. They're going to be ready to go because they think that's going to happen naturally now. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. From the gun on third down, gone. And it's caught by Parker. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. From the gun, here's gone. They'll find Albert there, complete. Touchdown, L.A. Gerald Everett, his third touchdown now on the year. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Zerline good with a PAT. And it's now a 7-0 game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 21. Here's Trubisky to throw. They'll get this complete into the hands of Riley Ridley. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A very solid gain of 27. And the Bears first down. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back-to-back. -back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. On first down, they go right back to Cohen. They find some open field here. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 
Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. So back-to-back -back big runs picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. They'll try and run for it first and goal. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. From the two now, second and goal. Look at this, a tight end carry. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. David Njoku. His third touchdown now on the year as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Point after, right down the middle. And we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. A shotgun snap for goal. And that will be incomplete. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. He gets this away. It's a good one, drawing toward the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 29, Trubisky, and he gets this one to Ridley complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First down, a run with Cohen. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going, and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Now Cohen. He doesn't find a ton of space following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. There to make the tackle, Samson Abuka. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Hey, box truck, box truck. Here's Trubisky. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So the contact came before the ball got there, and the flag is thrown. Timing is everything, isn't it? And it's so hard to cover these great receivers. They have such great body control, and they can fake you out. In this case, as you described, got there before the ball got to the receiver. Penalty flag had to come out. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to his tight end, David Njoku, but it'll be second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual know, for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. They'll run on second down with Cohen. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Now it's Trubisky. And it's caught. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Allen Robinson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bears have taken the lead. Extra point splits the uprights. And that makes the score 14-7. to Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. They'll run with Henderson. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Second quarter now from Los Angeles. It is the Rams in possession as they've got it with a first and ten. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. Now golf on first down. He gets it to Cooks. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 
It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great, and what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was looking for Parker that time, and that'll bring up second down. It went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Second and ten, golf again. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Christian Wilkins. What an effort from him on that play. Big tackle for a loss of 11. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Out of the gun, Goff. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Eddie Jackson picks it. Well, there definitely was some juice on that pass. And while tight ends don't always have the same reputation for hands as wide receivers do, in this case, that ball was expected to be caught. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Now, their last two drives, both ending in touchdowns, it's got them this 14-7 lead. And it looks to me, and I think you're probably seeing the exact same thing, they're in an ideal spot now to create some separation. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. Touchdown, Chicago! Tariq Cohen, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Bears are able to show off their quick strike ability. The point after is good, and it's now 21-7. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the ending, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. So after the incompletion, second and ten from the 22. Here's gone. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes these quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some Dutch. Yeah, especially nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get up field, get after the quarterback. It's been such an impressive first half to get that lead. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. On first and ten, it's Trubisky. The screen pass here to Cullen. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. 
When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Trubisky to throw. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. On first down. It's Cohen. Oh, Cohen lost the football. But the Bears look to get this one back, and indeed they did. So they'll keep possession. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like It's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Now a first carry for Donnell Pumphrey. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Three ball, three ball. Check three, check three, check three. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Tariq Cohen, his 10th touchdown of the season, second of the game. As the Bears push further out in front. No problem there on the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Gurley. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and ten. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him, that full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. From just shy of midfield, golf. And he finds Parker here, complete. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Quickly from golf to cup. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Not, wait. 
20. Back to the ground game here, Gurley. And he will make his way back to where he started from, and that's all, as we will make our way to the two-minute warning. A reminder coming up just a few minutes from now, we'll send you to Jonathan Coachman and our crew in Orlando. Coach will have a look back at some of the stats and scores from yesterday's action. And that's complete to Cooks. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. You take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays. Yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. They are just putting things together so well here, drive after drive. They really have captured the momentum, haven't they? They've taken momentum and pretty much not just give him a jersey, but a seat on the bench as well. Whatever do you need, you've got it because the way they're stringing things together and creating that distance between them and their opponent, it's really hard to narrow that gap. And the other part is they're taking their spirit away from them too. Yeah, now they're just looking to add to that total. Draw play here, Trubisky gives to Cohen. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38 yard line. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. John Johnson. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now Trubisky lost the football. And now the Rams have got it going the other way. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. With no running backs in the backfield to help pass protect, all the receivers in their patterns. It's going to be hot routes if they sense a blitz or pressure on the quarterback. They've got to be prepared to break routes off early and get the football. In this case, and down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Here's gone. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. Get up. 
at the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. Now we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary, playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only going to fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not going to be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Aaron Donald. He continues to wreak havoc in the offensive backfield. Sack number 16 on the year. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. Set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. On second and seven, Trubisky. This one caught by Ridley. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. They'll run on first down. It's Cohen. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Hey, Charlie. From midfield now, here's Trubisky. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. On first down, it's Cohen. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Here we go. They try again with Cohen. And some nice running going to get him down close to a first down at the Rams 23. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Third and two, now Trubisky. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. So that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. On the run, it's Pumphrey. And a good gain here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. 
Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Trubisky gives to Cohen. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Just a gain of a yard, but it's going to set him up with a first and goal. He's hit pay dirt a lot this year, but not that time. Yeah, I'm tracking right there with you. You're exactly right. He's found the end zone plenty of times. No way I can find any fault with the call. He may not have scored there, but of course you're going to give it to him. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. They'll get this halfway home from the 8 to the 4 on a gain of 4. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Second and goal from inside the five. This is Cohen. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. And the linemen, they're already walking back. A crucial penalty there as the hold backs him up for another second and goal. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. That is caught by Cohen. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? They snap it at one. Now it's Trubisky. Now Trubisky lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second? Most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. <laughs> Throwing on second down. Golf. Now a clash of bodies here and it's intercepted. Picked off here the 32. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. That pick, his ninth on the season. Remember when we were kids and you are playing Little League Baseball and they penciled you in in the nine spot in the order? That wasn't so good, was it? Were you in the nine hole? Or, or you played the nine position right field? That wasn't so great. That wasn't good. You're picking dandelions out there. Exactly. But the nine picks nine you won. Picks, you want that in a big way. That's a great season. Heck of a season. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Move, move, move. Alpha. Watch safety creep. Watch safety creep. Safety's creeping. Hey, 18, 18, 18. Again, it's Cohen. Eight yards on the run, and that cuts us down to a third and about five. 
on a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. They'll run it with Johnson. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Got to give a lot of credit to the defensive front there. They held their ground, pretty much stoned them on that play, and ended up creating a lost yardage play. Yeah, drop them from the one back to the two. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They give it off here to the tight end. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. A lot can go wrong when you call a play like this down in the red zone, but that's where you appreciate this from your head coach. He's not afraid to trust his guys to do the right thing. And as a player, that means an awful lot. Let's go, D. Big right here. We got to step it up. Alert, 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 alert. 22 Jet Bombers, 22 Jet Bombers. They'll run for it with Tariq Cohen. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. Taking it in from a yard out as the Bears push further out in front. Extra point safely through. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Khalil Mack make that now eight sacks for him on the season. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Check Mike 33. Check Mike 33. Let's go. From the gun, here's Gall. That'll be caught by Cup. He'll get 17 back there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. Critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Listen, 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 listen. The Rams going for it on fourth. Gone. And this is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. toss trying to turn the corner but he's going to be stopped right near the line of scrimmage call it no gain on the play and it'll be second down 
He couldn't get the edge there. It wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's no place for the run. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And now the Rams have got it. Go the other way. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. From the 38, golf. He's going to fire one deep left sideline. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Just nothing there again. He's been sacked multiple times. We've seen the interceptions, of course. He's really been through the ringer, hasn't he? And what we've seen is a defense that's well-coordinated. The front and the back really in sync. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. They go ahead and snap it. Go on. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And this is going to be incomplete. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. Check, check, 59. You ain't going nowhere. Check, 52. First down. Here's the run to Montgomery. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. The running game continues to be a big part of their success here early in the fourth quarter. And with those types of runs, that tells you they feel very confident in their running game. They feel very strong at this stage of the contest. And they want to keep doing exactly what we saw there, running the ball down their throat. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Second down. It's low. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. A sizable gain there. Nine yards as they get it back to a third and five. The Bears on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and five. They'll run it now with Pumphrey. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. And his kick is indeed good, and their lead will swell up to 28. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, 
don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you think that factored in. I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. On second and ten, gone. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. A handoff to start out the drive. It's Pumphrey. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. Give him two yards that time and it's going to leave him with a third and 11 situation. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Bears on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 11. On third down, it's low. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. That's it, baby. The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because their confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Brandon Cooks, 77 yards. And the Rams are able to draw a bit closer. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that'll cut the lead back down to 21. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Oh, did the Rams get it? Yes, L.A. football. So the onside kick is recovered. And, you know, I always thought, Charles, as someone who didn't play these positions, that going over the middle as a receiver or trying to recover an onside kick, those are two very tough things to do. It takes a lot of fortitude to put yourself in that position, but you have to do it in order to help your team win. Unable to recover it. It costs him the kicking team gets the football here. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 down at the 31. Now gone. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Another incomplete pass there. What do you take from this game offensively? Well, you know it's tough to really analyze for them because it is a team game, right? And let's be honest, though. The defense did them no favors in this one at all. Offense actually moved the ball. So, bottom line, film session, defense, it's going to be a real tough one for them. Offense, they'll get a little bit of praise. 
everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. The Rams on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and nine. This is caught, it's Cooks. And they'll get this one down to about the 20 yard line. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Rams football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Now Goff on first down. And he's got it. That's cut for a Ram touchdown. Cooper Cup with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Rams are able to cut into this lead. Zerline good with a PAT. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Bears' hands team able to pounce on it and get the football. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. They'll keep it on the ground. Cohen. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. It's a loss of a yard. Brings up second and 11 at the 22-yard line. Shut up! Manini! It's going to be a long game. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Bears, the win gets them a step closer to 500 at 5-6. Five and six. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Philly to take on the Eagles. Meanwhile, for L.A., it's starting to look like it won't be their year as they drop to 5-6. and six. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.